Testing for mylar can be quite difficult, but there is a telltale sign about mylar. Mylar is extremely strong in tensile. That's the force is going this way. If I were to test this material versus this material, genuine mylar will be much stronger than polyester. In 1975, the patent on mylar expired which allowed other firms to play around with the formula. Now, whether they're successful or not remains to be the question. Not everyone is as detailed as DuPont. This sample is distribution services. This is discount Mylar 7 mil. This is the Harvest Right 7.0 mil tensile test. This is VSU Vacuum Sealers Unlimited 5 mil sample. Pleasant Grove Farm 7 mil bag. This is Wallabies 7.5 mil. This is actual mylar at 2 mil thickness. This is a mylar 7.5 tensile test. These are the rankings of the tensile test. Distribution services of foil material at 7 mil performed the best at 24 pounds 6 ounces. Wallabies uh, claimed mylar material at 7.5 mils performed the least at 15 pounds 0 ounces. All of these rankings are fairly close and grouped together between 15 pounds and 24 pounds. With that said, it's interesting to take a look at line 7 and 8 and to compare them with those above. Line 7 is a genuine mylar product at 2 mils. And at 2 mils, this material didn't fail until 23 pounds 6 ounces. This material is 71% less than those above, but yet has 96% of its strength.
if the material from the other bag manufacturers were genuine mylar at those thicknesses between 5.0 and 7.5, we would expect higher pull test amounts. Line 8, a genuine mylar product at 7.5 mils pulled over 100 pounds. If this material was able to pull over 100 pounds, we, we would expect the materials above being equal to or just a little bit less than line 8, we would expect to see much higher results. This is a discount mylar burst test. Now this black bag looked like it just blew out the back end in the center and then traveled down towards the lower seam, but it did pretty good, but it was a major blowout. Next up on the test stand is distribution services. This is a foil bag 7.0 mil. Okay, the failure on this one was in the side. No failure on the back. And it was right prior to the seam. So it blew the side seam out on this one. Okay, this bag right here is from Pleasant Grove Farms. It is a seven mil. And here we go. Pleasant Grove Farms, it busted out the front, but not as a result of the hole. So the, the hole was reinforced, but it pretty much blew out the front part of the bag. So there we go. Up next is VSU Vacuum Sealers Unlimited. Now this is a five mil bag, not as thick as the others.
Okay, on the VSU bag, this also failed on the side. So prior to the side seam is where this one failed. Next up on the test stand is Wallabies, 7.5 Mylar bag. The Wallabies bag failed on the side. The uh, right before the seam so the Wallabies failure well yeah so right prior to the seam is where it got blown out bag needs no introduction. It's the pretty boy of the bag world, 7 mil from Harvest Right. So this bag definitely blew out the side, no question about it. So this would be a side seam failure, which is quite interesting because you can see the inner layer of the polyester and then you can see the foil layer right there. So interesting. Now just for comparison's sake, I am also doing this standard food storage bag from American Harvest for their vacuum sealing. Now this is not a Mylar bag, but I'm just doing this as a comparison on how much a bag like this can take in a PSI. So this bag, it exploded everywhere. I mean, it failed, failed on the back end of it, but it uh, took a sizable amount of pressure. Only problem with the drawback with this, it allows light to shine through. So it really could not be used for uh, our purposes. These are the burst test rankings discount Mylar performing the best at 12.1 PSI, Harvest Right performing the least at 5.9 PSI. This test measures the performance of the material and the manufacturer's seams. It should be noted that the seam that I provided, the secondary seam, never did fail. I found it interesting that in this case, thickness was not as much as a factor as the material composition. 5 mil thickness from vacuum sealers and limited performed just as well as bags greater than itself. I am often asked which bag is best to use for freeze drying. Well, I've used six different bags from Pleasant Grove Farms, from vacuum sealers and limited, from Wallabies, from Harvest Strike, from Discount Miler Distribution Services and even a shady one that I found off of Amazon. But when it comes down to it, I haven't had any problems with the bags. Now the oxygen absorbers are a different issue. 
but bags are bags are bags. Now, some bags have different options. Some bags have a little tear strip on the top. Some have them on the top and bottom. I kind of like the Ziploc uh, zipper that some bags have. And some bags will have a gusseted bottom that makes the bag stand up and gives you a little bit more room down inside. But I don't have any problems with these six vendors and I would not have any problems ordering from them again. Now, with that said, this graph, if you can call it a graph, kind of shows where all these vendors stand in relationships to each other. On one side, you have burst strength going from zero up to 13 PSI, and along the bottom, you have tensile strength from zero to 25 pounds. Within this graph is where everyone kind of lands. Right here, we have Pleasant Grove Farms, Vacuum Sealers, Unlimited, and Wallabies are kind of grouped in, in the center here. Harvest Right is kind of off to the right by itself with a little bit of extra tensile strength. And way at the top is Distribution Services and Discount Mylar, which kind of gives you the best of both worlds. Now, I'm sure someone is going to say that I did not test such and such company's bags. There are a lot of manufacturers out there. There's a lot of distribution uh, centers that sell all types of mylar or polyester or vinyl or foil uh, food storage bags. And this is what I've used so far. As time progress, I will seek out other companies and try their bags out. And as I get bags from other companies, I will give them the same tests under the same parameters as I did with these six companies. When it comes to bags, it really comes down to about three different issues that you really want to protect yourself with. One is you need a bag that will block out light or ultraviolet radiation. You want a bag that will block out oxygen absorption through the bag itself. And you want a bag that will block moisture. The most important thing is to protect your food and keep the environment away from it so it doesn't spoil and doesn't go rancid. And there are many other tests that can be performed, such as a puncture test, but I didn't get to the point of performing that. And I figure between the tensile strength and the burst strength, those two tests can pretty much cover what we use a bag for. So anyway, I'd like to thank you for your time with this little endeavor and I will continue to try to supply information to help you make educated decisions. This is kind of like a buyer beware, but in this case, you pretty much would get what you pay for. I am fairly confident that most of the food storage bags that are out there are not mylar bags. They're made out of polyester or vinyl or foil material, and that is just fine too. As long as they protect your food, it really doesn't matter what they're made out of. But Mylar is a product that's made exclusively by DuPont. And so unless it is Mylar, manufacturers and suppliers should not include it in their description. So with that said, I'd like to thank you for your time and I hope you found this educational and worth your time in watching this video. I will send you another video. And once again, go forth and freeze dry the world and please subscribe.